If I only had a heart. Well, would you take a pig heart? This man did. 57-year-old David Bennett received a heart transplant this week from a genetically modified pig. So this raises three questions. Why? How? And what now? So why? Well, he needed a heart. There is currently a huge shortage for organs. 17 people in the US die every day waiting for a transplant, and there are more than 100,000 apparently waiting. And this number is only expected to grow as the population increases and gets older. But I think you're more wondering, why a pig? Well, anatomically speaking, pigs are quite similar to us humans. Their hearts are a similar size to our own. And the fancy term for having an organ from a different species, in this case a pig, is pseudotransplantation. There's sort of just one major thing that hinders this process. Well, it's from a pig. And similarly to how our bodies mount an immune response to pathogens when we get sick, pigs have molecular differences which make them incompatible to humans. Effectively, our body would recognise the pig heart as foreign and try to get rid of it. And this is also a problem with human organ transplants, as we're all genetically different, unless you have an identical twin of course. And so many patients who've had organ transplants take immunosuppressants for the remainder of their life. This can have side effects such as reducing their general immune response, which may make them vulnerable to other infections, as well as the trouble of remembering to take them daily. But there are far more differences between pigs and humans than between humans. So how was this pig heart transplant possible? Well, the pig from which the heart came from was genetically modified, and this technology was developed by the company Revivacore, although they're not actually the only company attempting to do similar changes with pig organs to make them human compatible. But their approach involved making 10 genetic changes. So what were they? Well, firstly, what they needed to do was to remove any molecular incompatibilities on the pig cells. And to do that, they had to silence three different genes that encode enzymes that can add these different sugars to the surface of pig cells that are recognised by the human immune response. But besides silencing these genes, they also added human genes to the pigs. Two anti-inflammatory genes. Two genes that promote normal blood coagulation and prevent blood vessel damage. And two other regulatory proteins that help dampen down antibody response. And a final modification, remove the gene for a growth hormone receptor to reduce the chance that a pig organ will outgrow once it's implanted. And this builds upon a paper that came out last year where they showed that this modification reduced the growth of pig hearts transplanted into baboons. And so hopefully this will also translate in the case with David. And so once they've made these genetic changes to pig cells using gene editing, they can then use a process known as nuclear transfer to eventually generate genetically engineered pigs. And if that wasn't enough, David's also been given an experimental drug KPL-404, that is an antibody drug that reduces the activity of some of his immune cells, so an antibody immunosuppressant. So what now? Well, now I feel like we need to address the elephant in the room, well, in this case a pig, the ethical issues. For David, this approach was a last hope of saving his life. It was either die or do this transplant. However, some of the ethical issues that have arisen include patient safety, animal rights and religious concerns. Regarding patient safety, David knew the risks and, as I quoted earlier, he had no other option. The FDA made a special exception to allow this procedure for him, though if there is another patient in a similar situation, the team may apply for another. FDA approval for a human clinical trial will only come pending promising data from the use of pig hearts and baboons. Which uh, brings me on to the next concern, animal rights. One organisation, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, has condemned Mr Bennett's pig heart transplant as unethical, dangerous and a tremendous waste of resources. Animals aren't tool sheds to be raided, but complex, intelligent beings. Now, it's me, so I didn't want to end the story there. What alternative future strategies could we see employed to overcome some of these ethical considerations? 
Well, an obvious one to improve safety would be to have organs from our own bodies as this would prevent rejection. It would use a combination of cellular reprogramming and stem cells. We looked last year at some mouse work showing in vivo reprogramming to improve heart health in mice. And so human application will surely at some point be developed. And alternatively to that, some companies are developing mechanical organs, so a mechanical heart. Though this may raise more ethical considerations if it turns out mechanical organs enhance performance over organs we currently have. So we can't ignore the ethical issues, but that doesn't mean that this advance isn't exciting. And as the CEO of Revivacor says, this is not a one-off. We're going to take this all the way through to human clinical trials and hopefully have an unlimited supply of donor organs. And as I mentioned earlier, Revivacor are not the only company doing this. eGenesis is also investigating CNA transplantation. But until they release further information, I can't comment on how it differs to Revivacor, but ultimately the ethical concerns are going to remain the same. So anyway, I hope you've learned something in this video. Thank you to my Patreon supporters and thank you for listening.